What up, everybody? You're now tuned into the true definition of a sports fanatic. I'm your host, Brandon Lampley, back again today with another Facebook live stream. Uh, we're gonna get it in today, man, because uh, I, I gotta start out the show like I started out last week talking about Trey Young. But first, of course, I'm introduced my man John Reed back again with me. Um, uh, man, man. Man, this this uh this Trey Young kid, um, I think he's pretty good. I think he's pretty good. <laughs> that might be an understatement. <laughs> I think uh I think he I think he may be pretty good, man. I um I was watching it last night and I saw his final stat line and I knew he had something crazy, but when I saw 48 points, 11 assists, and seven rebounds, I said, What can you do? As as Milwaukee, what what can you do? Like, I, that's the same thing. New York couldn't do anything. Um, uh, um, um, oh, who did they play? Who, they just they just beat. Um, I can't think of the team they just beat. Oh my God, they couldn't be. They couldn't um, stay in front of him. And now uh, Milwaukee can't stay in front of him. Yeah. Like, there's 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 nothing they anybody can do. And then even when you adjust, like you say, you adjust and try to turn him into a passer. He had 15 assists in the game. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's really it's really pick your poison uh, with this young man, and I'm I'm just I'm in all I'm in all now because his mid range game is deadly. He can shoot from range, and they like you. I, we was talking earlier. He just can't stay in in front of him, and not only that, this is nothing if he doesn't have a good team around him. Like the Hawks aren't just Trey Young and a bunch of guys. They have a couple a bunch of, a couple of guys that can really get the job done. Yeah, man. I, I mean, you go back and watch that game, and you know they're doing a lot of pick and rolls, and you know for a guy who really has dominated the playoffs, it's just <laughs> Milwaukee mm -hmm. and, and the Knicks too. I mean, it's just like you can't you can't leave him open, man. You you I mean you when you switch, you got to make sure yeah, that yeah. The, the defender is on the switch, and you're defending him. At the top of the of the of the perimeter, and if you don't, he gonna make you pay, and that's what Milwaukee. Milwaukee really got to really change the way they play defense, man, because you got to put a big. You know, I I know in their schemes, I don't think the big come out on the perimeter, but yeah, they're gonna have to do something because Drew, you know, Drew Holiday is like on an island. I mean. <laughs> Once they throw the pick man on him and he's open, he can't, you know, there's no, he can't stay in front of him. And nope. the, and and the help, I mean, the help, the, the help defense is is coming. Slow. It's too slow, right? Yeah. And, and um, hey man, I and, you know the thing is, this is the only problem, big problem I have with Milwaukee, is that it looked like it takes them two games into a series to really figure out and make the necess necessary adjustment that you have to make. But if yeah. you go if if you go back and look how they beat the Heat and how they beat the Knicks, they run in the pick and roll and, and, and he's initiating it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he's mm -hmm. and he can beat you by getting on going in the paint, or he can beat you by the perimeter. And if you don't have the switch coming, just like Milwaukee, I mean, you look at his shots. I, I mean, how many I, I don't know what the exact percentage would be, how many open shots he got, but and man, they got to come up with some big adjustment, man. This kid is something else. I mean, I, I'm like you. I'm almost about mm -hmm. to put him mm -hmm. in there that he. I mean, he's right now. He's playing great and not good. He he's playing like Steph Steph or somebody, you know. Stephen, they called the next Steph Curry. And there's just so many things he can do with the ball, with the with the basketball. He's got good vision. He, I mean, he can penetrate and 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 he's the, the he can space the floor. He can see guys that I mean, some of those alley hoop passes that he mm -hmm. that he does. I mean, it's just like he, he's almost like a magician with a basketball, man. And he can score. He can shoot. You know, he can shoot. And you look yeah. back at Atlanta. I did a little research on Atlanta, man. <laughs> you know, like man, you know this team was sixteen and twenty at the All Star break. Can you believe that? A six. They were sixteen and twenty. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I, hey, I see you, Jakari. Jakari uh, talking trash about Giannis. He said, no bag Giannis. That's the been, that's been the story on him majority of his playoffs, Jakari, is that, yes, they've been able to win 
It's just that uh, he doesn't have many tools in the tool bag. No, he doesn't. Uh, when it come, especially when he could put the ball in his hand, everybody clear out and let me get a bucket. I mean, he can get buckets, but he just doesn't have much in the tool bag. Well, the problem is he can't go one against five. <laughs> that too. I mean, he's like a one against five, one on one at the park kind of type of player. I mean, that's and that's the thing. I don't know if it's the coaching staff there in Milwaukee. I mean, you know, you can't criticize a team for reaching the Eastern Conference Finals, so you can't say yeah, yeah. that the the system is broke. You know, I I probably said on your show two series ago that I didn't think they would they would even reach this point, but yeah. uh, but you have to play smart. I mean, you. I mean, you got to stop this kid. If you're going to win this series, you can't have him scoring 48 points and 11 assists and the floor spaced and and he's doing the, you know, he's shoveling his arm or with a shovel or whatever he's doing and it's still oh, yeah, the, oh, the, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, it's cold in there. It's cold, man. I mean, ice, that's why I call him Ice Trey. I mean, dude, it, dude, he do that, he do that move. You know, he do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jakar say if Giannis developed a little post game, maybe a shimmy or a dream shake, he'd be decent to me. Yeah, and I uh, and he, he doesn't even have to be a proficient three shooter, shoot it enough to where guys don't back away from you at the three point line, shoot yeah. it enough to where if they give you space, you put it up and you put it, put it in, uh, uh what 35 percent of the time. That's all you need to do about 35 percent. If you can give him 35. To thirty-two per thirty-two to thirty-five percent, I think that's decent. That, that's that's perfect because now you got guys. What uh, Joe Harris shot like forty something, forty-five percent or something, and he was a no-show in the playoffs, which is hilarious. <laughs> but um, yeah, but he had three horses um on the court when he was out. Well, I would say two horse, two and a half horses most times because one of them was always hurt. But he he still didn't have anything. But Giannis. He has to continue to develop his game, but I will give Giannis some credit. Look at where he came from and look at where he is now. So yeah. it, it's there. It's there. He just has to continue to develop it. And that's that's what's so amazing about this game. You have to, I mean, I know we don't want to get into Ben Simmons stuff, but you have mm. to add, you, I mean, you have to add facets. I mean, you have to add elements to your game because yeah. it's ath athletic, Giannis is, he still can be figured out, you know, and he's got to, yeah. he, he's got to work on his free throw shooting and he's got to be better as a spot up shooter. Even if it's, they didn't even have to be three, he got to be a better spot up shooter from 16 feet and beyond and, yeah. and, and get a jump shot off because he's not going to be able to just each season, just, okay, He's out. He's more athletic than any other big man, and he can use that to the advantage and drive on anybody in the lane. You, you, I mean, they're gonna take away something that you do good, and then you got. That's why you got to continuously to add to your game. So, if they figure one thing out, you can go in your toolbox and you get something else. And you, you got to yeah. be three. You, you know, you got to be three dimensional in this game. You can't be one dimensional. You know that's. Yep. I mean, that's why this kid is having. I mean, that's why Trey Young is so because you don't know if he can be he can beat you off the dribble, and he can mm -hmm. beat you from a with that with that jump shot, and, he, and and you can't sag off on him, or and even if you 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 play him close up on a perimeter, he can still he he's got enough in his two chest that he can beat you off the off the drive. So, I mean, yeah. a two headed monster is always going to be better than a one headed monster, no matter yeah. if you got five superstars on the team or not, but he, I mean, yeah. he's got to, got to work on his game. I say the same yeah. for Ben Simmons. I mean, whoever you got to yeah. work on your game in the summertime. That's what it's that's Michael Jordan worked on his game every summer. I know we got not to go all the way back to him, but you got to add an element to your game each off season. Yeah. Gilbert arenas talked about it. Um, He was doing a podcast with somebody, you know, Gilbert is hilarious, uh, but he <laughs> said, you could tell who's working. You can always tell who's working because they get better. They get better at shooting. They get better um, at certain facets of the game. He said, you can always tell who's working because they get better. No one goes in to put in the work and they don't get better. He said, it doesn't happen. Guys put in the work and they get better. Like Giannis, well, I don't think we'll ever have a Paul George, Devin Booker type game. 
but mm-hmm. he can do enough to where he can be a threat just like them. Like when the shot outside shot isn't falling, dude, they get in the paint. Devin Booker's elbow jumper is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just amazed. I'm amazed at Booker. I'm amazed at uh, the whole team. I mean, I, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I just, I've never thought that Phoenix right now looked to me to be the best team out of the four teams still playing. And they look yep. the best. And this is a they team do. that had a losing record last year. You know, they played great in the yep. bubble. But, um, I, you know, I, 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 they're going to be hard to beat, man. <laughs> yeah, they are. Let's see. Jakari says, Young is still the second best players in the playoffs. Yeah, I, I take Devin Booker is the best player in the playoffs right now. Yeah. I man. think Devin, Devin, Book, Devin Booker is the best. Trey Young on his heels, though. Trey Young yeah. is on his heels. He wills his team. He gets his team to the finals. Um, and they face off against Book. That that Devin Booker versus Trey Young trading oh. buckets. Yeah. I think that'll be a good that'll be a good finals. I think so. Yeah, small market or not, boy, that'll be exciting backcourt. Yeah. Brawl. <laughs> <laughs> they go, they're gonna trade jabs the entire series, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I I really feel that, you know, one thing on a big picture about the NBA, man, it's just amazing to me. Even when the playoffs or whatever, that they got so many, so many, so many different young guys that just come, coming up, up and coming great guys. You know, it used to be, oh, you know, how the league going to be if LeBron leaves? Or how the league going to be if Jordan leaves? And, and look like mm-hmm. always that the league is always to me, it seems like it ain't in good hands. I mean, this kid is just Trey Young. The, the, I mean, I'm still shocked. Pinch me on the arm that the Atlanta Hawks <laughs> got a point guard that's what? I mean, I, 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 mean he's, I think he's 180 pounds and he's what, by six, six, is he six one? <laughs> yeah, I, I think he's, um, um, He's he's not he's not that big. Let's yeah. see. I think so. Yeah, six one. Yeah, six, six one. Six one. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's like you literally and have to watch one eighty. Yeah, one eighty. Yeah, and mm-hmm. you literally have to watch. I mean, it's you don't know what he's gonna do next. You know. No. I mean, it's like a. <laughs> you know, and it's like he goes to your gym. He goes to your place on the road. They actually, out of all the three playoff series, they've they've won game one out of all three, and I think all three was on the road. And it's just like, man, you you can't find a guy that can stay in front of them, basically. I mean, you know, it's like, Mm -hmm. and it's just incredible how, um, you know, they got guys, you know, they don't come on TNT, they don't come on ESPN, I mean, you almost got to look up, guys. You know, I, I mean, I'm looking like Solomon Hill. I mean, I remember Solomon Hill played in New Orleans, and he was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not only did they got Trey Young, but it's like they they got like this. I mean, they they play excellent defense. They play excellent help defense, and they um they spread the floor. You know, you got this um athletic power forward, Collins, John Collins. I mean, no. Oh. And he just, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, you just see this team coming on, like man. And then I said earlier, they, they had a losing record at the All Star break, and they was the hottest team from after the All Star break till the end of the season. And it's like, man. And I guess it, it's, Nate McMillan is not a is he interim or, or he the head guy now? Or what they gonna give him the they, job? <laughs> they, they gotta, they have to. You gotta give him the job now. You have to. You, you have to um to also and this this is the other thing um when he's on and he's playing well he jumps off the screen and he mm-hmm. hasn't jumped off the screen just yet chris middleton yeah when yeah. chris middleton is on i remember um in the brooklyn series and i think it was game six yeah i think it was game six Game six, Milwaukee won game six because it was 3-2. Milwaukee won game six to take it to game seven. In game six, Chris Middleton, like, uh, that's why um, 
uh, what's his name? I know that a lot of some players can't stand him. A lot of people can't stand him, but he's must see TV is uh, Kendrick Perkins. Because Kendrick, yeah, yeah, a lot of people they talk trash about Kendrick. But Kendrick good at what he do, and uh, hey, he he moves the needle, and so he's always going to get views. But he talked about it. he said Chris Middleton is Batman, Giannis is Robin. That's how they were playing, and yes, Chris Middleton at that point against Brooklyn, Chris Middleton had to. I mean, he looked like he had took the lead. He didn't look like okay, I'm gonna defer to Giannis because he's the MVP. No, it looked like Chris Middleton's team, but mm-hmm. the other night. It looked like Chris Middleton, Chris Middleton was had shrunk. You know, yeah. some of that could be Atlanta's defense, but I think that's inconsistency from Chris Middleton because I haven't seen consistent play against the, the play he played against Brooklyn. I only see that in spurts. I've never seen it consistently. Yeah. And, you know, you can't <laughs> – another thing. He's a great player, but he can't go 0 for 9 from three-point range, man. He went 0 for 9 last night, so he's got to – you yeah, know, yeah. if you don't make it, <clears throat> the one thing I say about Chris Middleton is, man, if if you if you're not on on the outside shot, then he's got to be just like a Drew Holiday or a Trey Young. He's got to attack the basket. Yeah, and I and I like to see more of that out of him because he's got to be that guy. You know, in order for Milwaukee to win, they're gonna have to have Middleton to. to I mean, he's got to be. Uh, yeah. You know, he, uh, Batman or Robin, he's got to be. Yeah, he's got to have special games. He got to have mm-hmm. special performances, and he can't go six of twenty three or uh, have a sixteen seventeen point game and expect for those guys to win. So he's to me, he's just, you know, I know <laughs> Giannis is a is a all star and all that, but I hey, hey, the needle don't move unless Middleton has to have a great game also. You know, yeah. Because you don't know what you – I mean, you look at them. You, I mean, what are you going to get from Brooke Lopez? You, I mean, come on. You you, you get some rebounds, you yeah. know. Uh, Drew I mean, Holiday is inconsistent. You, yeah, you're not going to get a whole lot of scoring from P.J. Tucker. You get some good defense, but you're not going to get consistent. You're not going to yeah. get 20 points a night from P.J. Tucker, you know. Yeah. And, um, and when you look at, you know, Brooke not going to give you much on the scoring end and Tucker not going to give you much. And Holiday, I would just like to see Drew be a little bit more consistent on the offensive side. He's going to always be that on ball, the defender on the perimeter and the things like that. And um, But I, I would like to see him be a little bit more, more concertive. I, I guess consistent ain't the word. Just be more assertive. You know, he's a big yeah. guy, big guy as a guard, tack the basket and those kind of things. But the the Bucks is a team that they got to get effort and performance from, uh, you know, seven of their top eight guys got to have, have to be on, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If not, Giannis going to have – I mean, he, he would have to score 40 points a game for them to win, so – and, and I like, and also, I'm a critic of the head coach, but he got to get his guys prepared at the start of the series, man. You know, it's like I, I think they'll be better prepared for game two, but defensive wise, I just don't. They didn't look like they were, you know, they didn't look like they were prepared enough for me. You know, shoot, they didn't look like they were prepared with 30 seconds left in the game. <laughs> Plays that they called and certain coaching decisions that he made down the stretch. I say, man, they were they didn't they didn't play crisp um to end this game because as great as Trey Young was, they still had a chance to win the game. And yeah. they didn't, you yeah. know. So I saw a stat about Trey Young. Um he scored the most points in yeah. a single season uh of playoffs in Hawks franchise history. So no other player in this in, in the playoffs in a single season has more points than Trey Young. And he's in the conference finals in the first game with, <laughs> but with, with at least potentially six more games to go and a finals. Yeah. I love it. I love that floater. He's, he's got, I like that three point shooting and I like the way he attacked the basket. Sometimes he's the smallest guy on the floor, but he's also the one who's the most assertive at attacking the basket, man. And that's something you got to love to see. Man. <laughs> yeah. 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 
Yeah, I like to see the small guards look like they um they 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 run in amongst trees. You got all them the seven footers and the six tens in there, and they just come through kind of like Derrick Rose was. Derrick, Derrick, that's one that's why Derrick um his prime didn't last long because he ran yeah. into him. You yeah. know, Trey Young is running past, he's running under him, running around him, uh, and and floating, throwing floaters over them. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, you love you gotta love to see that, man. Yeah, he's a. I think he's a complete package, man. You're talking about Booker. I like to see. Chris, you know, I think he's a little too quick for Chris Paul if they match up. Though. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's yeah. He he's uh he's gonna leave Chris Paul in the dust. Yeah, yeah he's a. Yeah. Hey, it, 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 him against Chris Paul is going to be similar to um when Oklahoma City started their rise with mm-hmm. um Durant, Westbrook, Harden. And all those guys, and they started their rise. I remember them playing against the Lakers um, in the regular season. I think they played them in a playoff series, and um, I think it was um, Derek Fisher. And Derek Fisher had to stick Russell Westbrook. And I knew back then. I said, "He's not going to be able to do that. He's not going <laughs> to yeah. be able to do it." This this is going to be similar to that. Trey yeah. Young is not a Russell Westbrook as far as athleticism because. Man, Russ looked like he could have played wide receiver in the NFL. He just his mentality, his build, and just the way he looks, looked like he might have could have played wide receiver in the NFL. Trey's a little smaller, not quite as fast and athletic and uh with the jumping ability, but he's quick. He's quicker, he's quick enough. He's quicker than most. Let's put it that way. He's quicker than most. Even though Russ is one of the most athletic guards in the league, Trey's quicker than most, man. And it's, it's similar to Luca, where he has um, Trey has uh, he's more he's more gifted, but they both have a basketball IQ that's very high for a player that's so young. The, yeah. One of the reasons young players um, don't win in the NBA is because they just simply don't have the experience. And, uh-huh. you know, you know, them being older, having that man body does help. And I, I'll say this last night when I was watching Trey Young, I said he's uh, only three years in. He's one of the best players Um in the league now, uh, he he's he's cemented that and he doesn't even have his man by yet. Like you say, he's yeah. 180 pounds. He might yeah. top out at about 195 um, as he gets older. Um, but with with Trey, his basketball IQ is what is sets him apart as well. Not just his um, athletic gifts. Yeah, he got great, great, great handle and great vision. <laughs> yeah. His his vision is excellent, man. I mean, he can see yeah. plays break before they happen and, and send those alley oop shots up there. And you were talking about Westbrook, man. I'm speaking of o- OKC, yeah, I looked up like Cameron Payne used to play for OKC. How the world? Did yes. They, how in the world did they let him go? Dude, <laughs> he was eleven. He was like almost a lot. Of, he was eleventh overall pick. So why in the world? Would you trade a guy like him? I mean, whatever happened. I mean, I don't know what happened, but man, I, I was mean. I was I was watching. I was there um, because when Durant, I was following Durant because mm-hmm. uh, you know, LeBron. I was LeBron fan, of course, but I seen Durant and I was like, man, who's this kid? And they get a buzz by him going to Texas, and I said, so I looked him up and I was like, okay, man. So he killed Texas that year. Killed Texas that year. Got drafted by Seattle. And um, then they moved to um, watching them in Seattle. Then they moved to Oklahoma City. And I followed followed them that whole time until they finally broke it up. And the last the last player, I think the last player, well, yeah, Westbrook. It wasn't until mm-hmm. Westbrook left that I stopped, you know, kind of paying attention to Oklahoma City. But, yeah, mm-hmm. Cameron Payne, a bench player, didn't play. He just – I think he developed late. I think yeah. Cameron Cam, Cameron developed late because this player that he was to his in his um, their credit in their defense Oklahoma City is that he wasn't this player in Oklahoma City. Yeah, well, I mean, one thing about this game, man, <laughs> and I can attest to this in New Orleans, you have to have patience, man. You know, everybody yeah develops at a different rate, and um, you know, with the college guys coming out and so many guys leaving early and that things like that, man, this it it you know, for most guys, it'd probably take two years to really get into. I mean, when Anthony Davis first went to the to the Hornets, you know, he 
his body frame was like, man, this guy like skinny, you know. Yeah. <laughs> He's wiry. <laughs> yeah, it's like you can't, you know. And Monty used to say, like, you know, they couldn't put him against the physical centers because he just hadn't physically developed yet. Mm-hmm. And that's said, you, you look and second year in, third year in, and it's like, man, he he added the weight on, and he, you know, and he, he, he you know, it changed his game. But you know, everybody. You know, everybody's not like Zion or somebody like that. You got those physical talents and and, and things, yeah, yeah. and and and, you, and I and I say the key in a lot of it is if you if you went out and drafted a guy eleventh overall and you expect for him to just come in and be a superstar immediately, man, that's those might be some expectations that you that may not be attainable, you know. Yeah, it, it seemed like this kid got a lot. I mean, he's got a lot of intangibles. You know, he plays hard and, and um, got a nice shot that he doesn't really force. You know, a lot of young guys like force shots. It, it just seemed like to me that he, you know, over the years, I guess he learned how to play more under the control. You know, because a lot of times young guys. He's wild. He's still wild. I watch him. He still that wild tendency he had in Oklahoma City. He still has it, but he's a little more under control with it. Yeah. Yeah, because you ain't going to be on the floor long with Monty if you play with him. <laughs> right. He's playing team basketball now. It's it's um it's, it's, it's nice to see, man. You know, too bad it's not in Oklahoma City, but it is mm-hmm. nice to see. Yeah. Oh, but uh, before we uh, get off of basketball, I got to mention uh, Mr. Paul George. Paul George has been playing well, very, yeah. very well ever since Kawhi Leonard has been out. They should have won the other night. Um, he had that. He missed those free throws. But like I said, he scored nine straight to get him to that point to where they were in position to win the game. So he just has to finish and make his free throws. But I mean, they, there's no shrinking from him in this playoffs. I think he saw his moment. He heard the jokes. You know, even 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 he's made the jokes. He's heard the jokes because he made a joke. He got married, um, I think, a couple years ago. He made the joke saying his wife got a ring before him. So, you know, so he's heard the jokes. He's heard the jokes. But he stepped up, man. He stepped up to the challenge and he's been a dynamic player, man. Like the the, um, Phoenix can't guard him. Just like uh, they can't guard Devin Booker. Phoenix can't guard um, uh, uh, Paul George. Man, you know, I'm hearing a rumor out in L.A. that all, like half the Lakers are rooting for the Clippers to lose, man. <laughs> I would imagine. They That's got a guys, huge robbery. They got guys on the internet, <clears throat> on Twitter, and they're talking about, like, man, the Clippers shouldn't even be here. That, and come on, man. I think when you no. got two teams in the same city, there's no bonding, and there's no rooting for the team. The rivalry right. that bad, huh? <laughs> right. It should be a hey, hey if, if the Clippers win the championship, it should be, it, you, it should it wouldn't be a LA championship. It's a Los Angeles championship. Come on now, I mean the Lakers been top dog, it's still top dog for since their inception. So since they moved from Minneapolis um, as, as the Lakers and moved to the Los, An- Los Angeles as Lakers, so um, I, yeah, it is what it is. But uh, the Clippers though, if they can. Yeah, what I, I well they're in trouble because uh, Chris Paul is back. Like it, before, before I, I heard Chris Paul was clear for Game Three, I gave them uh, especially a fighting chance. But that that dude, hold on, that that guy there. See, pandemic P uh, psych messed up uh, like Nick Anderson's. Oh, his psyche. Shoot, you could uh, when you talking about the psyches and players kind of like losing it. Um. Paul George in the playoffs, even though he's um, he's gotten better and he hasn't shrunk. Uh, ben Simmons. Ben Simmons, I thought it was just a shooting issue, but they say it's not a shooting issue per se. It's up here, they say, for Ben, because they say he's afraid to shoot, period. Like, he's scared to shoot. He's not uh, he's not an attempting to shoot the ball, and he's not going to get better unless he shoots the ball, and he has to shoot the ball. But Brandon, he's got. I mean, I know they out, they gone fishing, but this kid, I I remember watching him at LSU. He wouldn't shoot at LSU either. I mean, he wouldn't shoot enough to like take over a game. You know, it's like he deferred yeah. so much. I saw this kid in summer league, 
and the big thing he wanted to be then you know at that time when he first came in with philly they wanted him to play on the, they wanted him to play inside they didn't want him to play out there on the perimeter but when he was playing on the perimeter he was he was a you know he was a distributor he wasn't a scorer and i yeah. think i i think i say this for for any guy like him he's not working on his game man you, ain't nobody gonna tell me that if Ben Simmons worked on his game in the summertime, that he couldn't be a better shooter. I mean, the problem with Ben is he doesn't have any confidence. That's why he, underneath the basket, he, he, mm -hmm. he passing up layups because, yes, it, it's a psyche, but it's also confidence because he don't believe that he can make the shot. Make the and, shot, yeah. And, and he's got to, you know, some of these guys must go to, Cabo or, or something or, 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 or you know Mexico or somewhere but mm -hmm. some guys need to stay home or go out to LA and go play at UCLA and mix it up with all those yeah. guys out there because as you said earlier and hey man it it shows more than anything if you don't work on your game in the summertime this guy I've been in the league since what two I mean, he's been in the league for four years and his he has not mm -hmm. elevated he has not elevated his game you know he's been no. a great he's been a great defender he's a great facilitator he's a great ball handler all that for a size of that he has you know that you know it, it's great that he can penetrate and play out on a perimeter but man, he's a liability if he can't score, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And shoot, he's going. He's in his sixth year, so he'll be going to his seventh year next year. Next year, I mean, that's just unacceptable. I mean, I, hey, people call him an all star and all that. That's unacceptable for a guy to be in the sixth year. Yeah, and LeBron has has been his mentor. They like best. Yeah. They, I was they about to say that. They yeah. Le LeBron has been with you know like been schooling them since he came into the league yeah and it's under like his wing. this kid does not work on his game i mean he cannot work on his game if he can't establish a shot you know and yeah. and and right now if you look at what what's out there right now the 76ers are seriously thinking about that we can't win with this guy you know we no. we might have to get get rid of him but it's like man how can you be in the league and you hear all that chatter for six seasons? It's been out there for six years that Ben cannot shoot. Ben don't want to shoot. Ben mm -hmm. don't work on his shooting in, in, the, in the off season. And this kid, like, man, you know, somebody would use that as a motivation. What Ben yeah. Simmons does, he doesn't use it as motivation. His, his game has not improved, man, and that's why – I don't think he's gonna be back in uh, with the 76ers. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think so either. And it's another one. Um, just like them, who we named. He said Nick Anderson. Uh, we talked about Ben Simmons. Think about Markel Fultz and mm -hmm. what he went through. Mm -hmm. Like if if he can have some type of semblance of game now, because I think um, yeah. He had 12.9 points, 5.4 assists, 3.1 rebounds. I mean, yeah, I thought he was pretty much done. I thought he was going to be out of the league. How, how they like psychologically and how his shot, they just messed, he messed his shot up. But look at him now. Like he's yeah. a better shooter than Ben Simmons. Yeah. You know, at so. least he takes shots. He's a, a, aggressive. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think. That's, that's one of the things too, man. If Ben is aggressive, and that's one that's one of the things um I notice when it comes to especially sports in general. When you work hard, when you out hustle people, because the old coach, my old coach used to say it all the time, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Mm -hmm. So if you can outwork people and you I mean your motor is motor is always on a thousand, good things are gonna happen. Yeah, good things are gonna happen when you're out there hustling, man. You're just gonna fall into plays from time to time because you're you out there hustling and you're getting to a point faster than the next man. So I play like your hair on fire, but man, at this point with Ben Simmons, they need a, a basketball psychologist or something to you know come in and talk to him and ask him what he'd be dreaming about and you know his daydreams and uh, his yeah. his thoughts during games and all of that. 
he's gonna have to want it, man. <laughs> it's gonna, it, it, it's a it's a mind game, and and he's got either he gonna if he got to have a desire to be a complete player or he, uh, or, or he don't. You know, I mean, it's great to be what he's six six ten. What what is he six eight six ten? Six ten. You know, 610 and he can play the perimeter and be like a magic but man you can't go down the lane and see a layup and <laughs> pass it to the other guy and pass it and yeah, ben simmons should his game in the paint should be similar to Giannis's. yeah attack. it should be that's what it should be it should be similar yeah. to Giannis's. but i mean it is what it is man so and I just Which think stuff? it's this beyond unreachable. I mean, what what in the world could Doc Rivers say to this kid, man? It's like, hey, you've been in the league for six years. You can't. And I think even Doc, the one said that he he's scared to take the shot. <laughs> yeah, he did say that. He did say that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Scared to take yeah. the shot. So, well, that's so, that's man. that's like saying that you you're playing with no heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo, boy, Pretty that's much, like, that's like a wide receiver who don't want to make a catch on the football field, even when he's wide open. <laughs> Alligator arms, he like this. <laughs> you know, instead of putting those arms out there like this, he like oh, this, trying to catch the ball. Like you can't, yeah. you, you you can't, you can't do it, man. But that's hey, it is what it is. That's a quarterback who playing scared on Sunday. That's what that is. That's a, that's the same definition on the football field of a quarterback scared. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was I was young, I was young when they um when quarterbacks are um either they either scared or they're um they're they're too hyped up and you got to calm them down. They're too they they're rattled. Everything's high, everything's high. Everything is like they throwing to uh, Harold Carmichael who's six eight on every pass. Everything is high, so you got to calm them down, get them some completions, get them back into the flow of the game. But in basketball, the way you do that is attack the basket. That's Dude, it. if you go if you go down and try to dunk on guys four straight times, that could activate something else in your game, man. Like, man. just do something. Get get that, aggressive. That's that's what's so puzzling. You're six ten. You're six ten. Let me let me send a personal message to Ben Simmons. <laughs> you're six. <laughs> you're six foot ten. Come on, man. You you're six ten. You can dunk on ninety percent of the players in the league. You can yeah. get a layup. You can attack the basket. Your verse, reverse layup, and work on your game. I mean, come on, man! This guy making twenty something million a year, and you can't spend three months out of the summer to improve your game. I mean, yeah. come on, man! That's like that's an insult to the basketball gods, man. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I can't watch him no more. I I I I'm going on boycott. I, I can't watch Ben Simmons no more. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy just, to see. I'm just being real, man. I watched that at LSU when he was there. He couldn't take a shot. Yeah. Jakar <laughs> say uh Aiden Aiden need an NFL contract. Hey Jakar, so hey Jakar, so I know Jakar remember this. So Jakar, I know you remember NBA Street Volume Two. And because uh, they had the NBA Street had Volume Two, Volume Three. My favorite was Volume Two. But remember, one of the signatures of the game is that the players jumped above the rim, like they jumped above the entire goal to do tricks in the air, come down and dunk the ball. DeAndre Ayton looked like NBA Street player uh, the other night, man. I mean that they for him to be a seven footer to be that athletic. For him to be able to run the floor is one of the keys for Phoenix. Even though Phoenix is a good team, they play yeah. team basketball. The centerpiece, Devin Booker is a great player. The centerpiece is DeAndre Ayton, even with him being as young as he is, man, because they're able to do so much because of his athletic ability and the fact that he's seven feet tall. There's, I don't think there's another seven-footer in the league who can do what he does as far as athleticism, man. It's, mm-hmm. it's second to none. Yeah, he can See run your cars. Say, yep, that's exactly what he did off the chip uh, block from Booker. Yeah. Wow. But he's been good all year, man. I mean, he's he's definitely, you know, should have been, and nobody can question about them picking him number one overall. No. Nobody. Mm -hmm. You know, he's. You can't question Arizona for offering him a hundred grand to get in trouble by the feds either. 
<laughs> don't and don't you understand now why they offered him a hundred grand? I understand. Yeah, I understand. I'll drop the case right now. If I'm the feds, hey Arizona, we understand. You had to offer him a hundred grand because you weren't gonna get it for anything less than that. Yeah, you're right. He took the money and ran, huh? <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, but yeah, it's, all, it's always nice to have a seven footer who can run, rebound. You don't have to be the number one option and still be an impact on the floor. Yeah, he's yeah. he's a he's a good get for the Suns, man. Ain't no doubt about that. Oh uh, yeah, Jakar said someone not saying this right, but I understand. I understand. Hey, hey, look that that um that meme of um um Bernie Mac. He said, "I'm not condoning that behavior, but I understand." <laughs> <laughs> hey, he might have said they offered. I couldn't refuse too, man. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Hey, they gave him off. He can't could not refuse, man. Well, tonight we got um Clippers and uh Phoenix, and now that Chris Paul is back, I just I I, I don't know. Now, but in L- they're in L.A., and I'm going to give the Clippers the game tonight. I'm going to give them uh, – they got to get on – they're going to get on the board tonight. I think that them – they played well in L.A. I don't think they've lost uh, – have they lost the game in L.A.? I don't, I don't, I don't think – I can't remember them losing. If they have, it's not it's, – it hasn't been many because I've seen a couple of their games. Yeah. Well, you know – The car say sons and foe. <laughs> yeah, I, I might agree. Even though those guys came back, they were they were down 0-2 against Dallas, right? Yeah, and they went to LA, swept those games, uh, lost it. They lost they lost all the Dallas games. They they lost in Dallas and won in LA until they had to win in Dallas. You know, I'm just throwing something out, man. I would like to see Reggie Jackson get more shot opportunity. I mean, I think he's red hot. I mean, I yeah, he is. It's almost like every time I see him put up a jump shot. It's going in the basket. And maybe they need to get him more more involved. Maybe we need to have a 36, 37 point game and and just um you know not rely so much on on, on Paul George. Right. You know? But you know, the bottom yeah. line is this, Brandon. And you said this in Denver, man. It's hard to to win at this point in the playoffs, man, when you don't have one of your top guys, man. And Kawhi, yeah. I, and it don't look like they may not have them. So they yeah. got to come up with guys, you know, Morris and guys, you know, <clears throat> Rondo or whoever off the bench. They got to come don't up. Say Boogie. <laughs> Bo- <laughs> yeah, you never know. But, hey, Boogie get you seven points, but it gets you seven fouls in the same amount of time frame. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, because he going to have – uh, uh, five personals and two technicals. Yeah, he's been there and just grab the guy and pull him to the to the court on the and floor the, yeah. and say, he mm-hmm. is, "I ain't do nothing," and then get a technical on that. But they got to come up, man, because I mean, what was he averaging? Twenty, at least 24, 25 points a game, and you got to come up with. I mean, Paul George is a great player, but Paul George can't score fifty a night. No, hey, Jakari say, um, yeah, the Suns will win, barring any headbutts tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that. I, I, okay. that boy nose like this. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that nose was nasty, man. Yeah. I know he was pissed off. Hey, he don't care about how it looked. He was pissed off that, like, dude, like you did that. I know he was like, you did it on purpose, Patrick Beverly. You you did it on purpose. Ain't no way. You did it on purpose, man. <laughs> I, I plead the fifth with Patrick Beverly, man. I didn't see that happen more than more than once. He's done it enough. He's done it <laughs> enough to where I'm gonna say he did it on purpose. Because yeah. I've seen too many times where he did things and he clearly did it on purpose. When he tore um Russell Westbrook's meniscus and act like he didn't do anything, that mm-hmm. after he did that, I said, Oh yeah, this this dude, this dude off the chain right here. Yeah, he's been doing it for years. Yeah, Chris Paul does some of the same stuff too. Yeah, but Chris Paul at least looked like he's trying to get away with it. At least. <laughs> oh, Patrick Bailey, man, is one of the most dirtiest players in the league, man. He can't but shoot like him, though. Nah. Patrick Beverly equals Bruce Bowen 2.0. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Beverly is... Um, 
he ain't the <laughs> he ain't the prototype good um good natured player man no no he's not no no mm -mm. He, he when he shows up like my grandmother used to say um the devil is coming to kill steal and destroy that's what he comes to do night in and night out on the basketball court yeah oh yeah yeah but i don't oh, yeah, know man so i'm i'm picking the Suns again man i just i don't know i don't think the clippers can figure them out man I, I give all the, the glory to, to Monty Williams, man, because Monty yeah. got a complete team. He got two dimensional players. They can, I mean, I think they might be even better than the Hawks. I think they can spread the the way they spread the floor and pass the ball, and and that mm -hmm. ball move, moves around. I, I, I mean, I, to me, they like the best team I've seen in the whole entire playoffs right now. The space in the floor. All guys, you know, you, you, you get a guy come off the bench and he playing just as good as a starter in pain. And uh, <laughs> eight, eight, ten, I mean, he's a seven footer that can run the floor, rebound, dunk, do it, wh whatever you ask of him. And he doesn't even de demand the ball and still get 20 something points a game. They just yep. make him basketball. To me, they're just making it look, they're making basketball, playoff basketball look real easy, man. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. So yeah, okay. Well, I got I got clip clips tonight. <clears throat> clips tonight. Yeah. Let go. Son. Come on. <laughs> take, hey, take take. Yeah, at least get, hey, get on the board. Clips. You got you can't you get a gentleman sweep at least, man. You you can't you can't get you can't get swept. You cannot yeah. get swept. And Jakari to my uh black Air Force energy. Yeah, that that's Patrick Beverly. Yeah, they. <laughs> I don't know if you ever ever <laughs> seen that where they talk about um people who do some of the grimiest stuff wear black Air Force ones. No, that's what he wear. <laughs> mm hmm They tell me, think about your, your uncle with the drug problem or your cousin or any of those dudes in the neighborhood that grew up that were shady characters. They always had on dirty Air Force Ones, all yeah. black. <laughs> yeah, he one of them Chicago legendary defenders, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, well, he's I got, think that's he, enough. Uh -huh, go ahead. He's got Ron Artest at him, man. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> <laughs> he got some. He got some Ron Artest. Not Metal World Peace. He has Ron Artest. Yeah, Ron Artest. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, man. So um, uh, we didn't talk a good little bit of basketball. So let's finish it up with a little NFL. Wasn't much um, NFL news, uh, but I, I seen it a few days ago and I said I got to bring this up. Sean, Coach Sean McVay, head coach of the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, he's been gushing over uh, Matthew Stafford. Said he's been in a better mood this offseason. And he called him. He said this dude is a bad MFer. He said what whatever people say about him, as good as it can be, he's even better than advertised. It makes sense to him. The guy's ability to see the game, his ability to draw on his experiences, the feat that he has is pretty special and unique. And, man, his feel for people, his authentic way of connecting with his teammates, his coaches, this guy is great being around him. And, uh, yeah, I've – I, and I will say he's as advertised. Um, one of his issues has been that he's played for the Detroit Lions. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, been that, one of his issues. That, that's one of the biggest issues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the biggest issue. Um, but you got to know, automatically, when they traded Jared Goff for him, that's an upgrade. I said it then. It's an upgrade. Um, with this current team that they have, you have a good running game. You got a good running back in Cam Akers, who had, I think, 200-yard games last year in the playoffs. Um, you have a top-five defense, Jalen Ramsey, which that always pisses me off. Um, Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald um, on defense. And then offensively, Deshaun Jackson. He uh, made a statement a few days ago saying that this is one of the best uh, wide-receiving tight end groups that he's ever been around. He said this, this group is very special. Um, so – it, it's going to be interesting, man. It's going to be interesting. All Matthew Stafford really has to do is they're going to run the football like they've always done. But that play action, just don't don't turn the ball over and connect on some deep bombs. You connect on deep bombs, don't turn the ball over, they're going to win majority of their games, man, because teams are not going to be able to run up the score on them. So, shoot, they'll win it. They'll, they could, their defense, they, if they hold teams to, let's say, I think the, the benchmark is like 15 points. 
If you can hold teams to 15 points, dude, that's that's 11, 10, 11 wins right there. Yeah. And, and you know, he, <clears throat> you know, the thing about, I mean, Marvin Jones just raised about him. You know, he just said it is he was a, always a leader in the locker room. He He's tough as nails. He plays hurt. You know, he could he could get the ball downfield with the best of them. And, um, you know, even when he was at Georgia, he was a great quarterback. And it's just like, you know, when you go to a situation where, you know, Detroit is Detroit, man. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just like it's just it's just tough to win. And it's just, you know, a lot of times when you see teams like Detroit, it just get it, 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 the real story just sometimes don't come out about how bad the offensive line is that he's got to play behind and he's on the run and and all those kind of things. But when you put him on a team with that much star talent, good offensive line, mm-hmm. good young head coach with some imagination, I mean, he's really got a good offensive mind as a head coach that put him in position to win. And this guy, he's you know, he done been to hell and back, and he just, you know, no matter what season or whatever, the same thing comes out of his mouth when he was in Detroit. He just want to win, you know. Yeah, he just yeah. want to win. And um, yeah, and I think that's a perfect fit for him with the Rams. And um, definitely an upgrade. I agree with you on that. And um, I, think, I think he's going to put them in a position where he can make the plays that need to be made down the street down the stretch I, I i thought that was golf biggest problem you know he would look great in the first second quarter okay in the third time to win a game in the fourth and he didn't show up yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. and i really think the rams are a team that's really knocking at the door man i think they don't they don't have too many weak weak points on on, on that roster no and they I don't just, uh, and they're playing a tough division. Obviously, I, I mean, that's a tough division they're in. But, uh, you know, it, it could be, Brandon, that, they, hey, this might be the missing piece. You know, they needed a, a experienced quarterback, you know, not one who who did take them to a Super Bowl and, you know, and they lost. But a quarterback who done, you know, he done, he done saw what the side of losing. He done saw some success and. You know he, you know he, he just is, you know he know the end is near basically. Again, he wanna yeah, yeah. be on this situation where, you know, he couldn't ask for anything better going to a situation with the Rams where there's so much talent, and that defense they got, that defensive front they got that you know they don't need to score forty points a game to win. You know you put nope, twenty one nope. points on the board, that defense a hold, so it takes some of that pressure off. Off, off him and, and the offensive guys, and I think you got a quarterback that can just get them in the end zone better than the one that they had, and I think that'll be his biggest impact with the Rams. He'll get them in the end zone, you know. Yeah, you're not going to have the boneheaded mistakes that yep. a golf made, that a Wentz made, that a Blake Bortles would make. Like yep. those, yeah, the, those, those guys are talented. Of course, Blake Bortles is is not. Um, in the same category with golf and Wentz as far as talent from the quarterback position. But he was talented nonetheless. He was. You know, he, he came to a bad situation, a bunch of coaching changes, them trying to change his um, – the footwork never got um, taken care of, things like that. But they all were – had uh, talent. But the boneheaded mistakes is what killed all of them. It's what, yeah. it's what kills all of them. It's going to kill – it's going to kill Wentz in Indianapolis – Unless, unless, and golf in Detroit, because golf's mistakes in Detroit are going to be uh, really big now, because <laughs> that's going to lead to losing. He yeah. made a lot of mistakes in L.A. and they still won majority of their games. They're going to lose games in Detroit if he's the same way. Yeah, you know, the big thing about him is, you know, there's always some quarterbacks who think they can just throw it in that tight window, yeah, and force it. <laughs> yeah. You know, like he can just make any throw but man just just forcing it in and, and get it in a pick an interception and just you know maybe he'll learn his lesson up there he he, he 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 does have you know who his quarterback coach is right <laughs> who's his quarterback coach 
the former great Jaguar quarterback. Oh, uh, Brunel is in uh, Detroit. Yep. I forgot about that. Yeah, he is. Let's see. Uh, Jakari says, speaking of Jaguars, one more thing. ESPN is showing Visca some love. Visca has been getting a lot of love, man. LaVisca, um, I've seen where they talk about him. He's The story of camp is LaVisca Chanel. Outside of Tim Tebow and Trevor Lawrence and, you know, the defense playing well and whatnot, it's been LaVisca Chanel. And they were talking about him playing a Percy Harvin type role in the offense coming up this year because I went back and looked at his rookie highlight tape and it's better than I remember 600 yards, five touchdowns. And I still don't think they used him properly. Yeah. I think urban Meyer will use him properly. Yeah. I mean, you know, I like to see him play more than just be a slot receiver. I mean, I know he's big and physical, but I like to see him yeah. play a little bit outside or they go with a trips or something. And he's somewhere. I, I want to, He's got tremendous speed. His speed, to me, from what I've seen in those practices in the offseason, it looks like he's he's improved on it. He, he looks faster, you know. Mm -hmm. And if he's faster, then, you know, he's a physical guy. But, you know, I, I don't think any of those receivers should be locked into saying, okay, he's a slot guy. He's an outside guy. I say put three on one side. Run the run the field, throw the ball deep, see who can catch it. Run it and catch it. That that's the that's the kind of offense I want to see from the Jaguars. I thought last year Jaguars under Marone is they're so they were like systematic, you know. Okay, yeah, everything underneath route, you know. LaVisca could be wide open if he runs 20 more yards, but he don't get the pass 20 yards down the field, he get the pass 10 yards across the middle. You know, and just make the offense wide, more wide open. Because if you got playmakers, you know, mm -hmm. give them some space. Let them take that space and take it to to stretch the defense. But you know, I I don't think um I don't think this offense on the bevel is going to be where they just you can almost script them like like last year. I think you can almost script them. You know that he's in the slot. He's gonna run a, 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 a you know a slant route, and it's gonna yeah. he's gonna run a ten yard slant route, catch the ball, try to beat a linebacker, and get hit by the safety. You know, I, I think it's gonna be more of um, man, get open, read the defense. If you open, Lawrence gonna spot you, whether you're in the slot or outside. But yeah, yeah. the kid looks faster. He definitely had a um. A nice off season. Let's see what the pads when the pads come on. Let's see what he do when the real competition start. And he yeah. got you know. And think of you know his biggest problem is he's got the you know he he's got a board injury. You know he's been injured a lot, so he's got mm -hmm. to be more durable. But man, we saw a, a Lavisca who fast can catch any make any catch and. You know, there's a lot more to see from him before we start like <laughs> crowning him as this great receiver. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So do you so you, you, remember you remember Charles Sharon? Mm -mm, I don't remember him. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not mistaken he, played he played for the, played the Jaguars. Jaguars. And um yeah. one of his issues was that he was uh, always MVP of the underwear league. <laughs> and uh <laughs> so when it, but when the pads came on he was a different player yeah well you know what man i don't seen a lot of practice superstars <laughs> right the NFL, the nfl got a lot of practice superstars and when sunday comes you can't you can't notice them so we don't want yep. that from LaVisca. <laughs> no, we don't want but we, we know LaVisca can play. Um yeah. and we know he'll he'll be better. Yeah, Jaguars receivers Charles Sharon arrested when he was oh, this was 2007. But yeah, I'm about to say there's no pictures of him in the Jaguars uniform. There's not anything uh okay, okay, yeah, is a former okay. I see where they got him for as a Jaguar player, but dude, they say he was like he was underwear league Jesus, man. But he could not when the pass came on, Charles Sharon disappeared. Disappeared oh, every time. 
Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's not a good thing, especially when you start. <laughs> no. So your car say, I'm glad Tebow is taking a lot of heat off of Trevor, too. Oh, man. Yep, Tim yeah. Tebow has taken um, um a lot of the attention uh, so far. Um, I think Trevor seems like he's been able to, you know, come in and get comfortable in his role. And even without Tebow, the moment, I know, there's no moment that looked like it would be too big for Trevor Lawrence. I mean, yeah. if Trevor's get drafted by the Giant, the Jets, um, he goes to any big market or get put in any situation, I don't think it would have been too big for him because of his maturity. Let me say this about Tebow. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got a story running tomorrow about Tebow. Don't be surprised if Tebow be on the practice squad. I, I, if they keep three tight ends, he's he's not part of the three, and I don't think that he's not going to keep his um, the kid he drafted from Ohio State, and he's definitely not better than Manhurts, and he's definitely not better than o o O'Shaughnessy. Yeah, and to, and to be honest, he's he's not better than Tyler Davis, so I can't see the Jaguars keeping five for tight ends. So yeah. I think. I think the best option is to, you know, release them, which they might do at the toward the end of camp, and then they put them on the practice squad so he can learn the position. And a, and a, and a, and for the last two seasons, this season won't be any different than last year. Each week, you can bring up two practice squad players to put them on the active roster for the um, on game yeah. days, and that might be the perfect role for them. But to to be honest, from what I see and what I saw. From what they got, and, and that tight end room is not good. But right no. now, he's sitting probably, probably the fourth seat. He's probably the fourth tight end on that roster right now. And yeah. um, and I just, you know, I, I think I don't think Urban Meyer is just going to force the issue to say, well, we need to have Tebow here. I think he'll be here, but he'll be on the practice squad. Which is not a bad option. He's 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 learning yeah. the position, and you know, you know, yeah. if a guy learning the position, he's no, in my opinion, right now, Tebow, he's no different than than an undrafted rookie or a rookie draft pick, maybe a sixth or seventh round guy who's fighting to earn a roster spot. And the only difference is is that Tebow is trying to learn a position, and and the practice squad is a perfect spot for a guy. Who has some potential? He has some potential. I mean, he can catch, mm -hmm. but you can't. You know, I'm gonna be a. Hey, I can only be realistic. There's no way in the world they're gonna keep five tight ends. No. And right, and, and from base, unless he just have a hell of a training camp, which I don't see. There's no way in the world he gonna jump ahead of Manhurts, jump ahead of O'Shaughnessy. And a, and jump ahead of um, the, the kid they drafted, and um, and, and they're not going to cut a fifth round pick, <laughs> right? So yeah, and if you go back to last year, they only kept three tight ends, and a year before that, I think it was four. So they're not going to have five tight ends on that roster. And to be realistic, he's fifth string right now, going into camp in, in within a month. So. Yeah. Practice yeah. squad, I think, is an option. Yeah. Say, so who's the start of 2020 22 season? Robinson or ETN? Hmm. That's interesting, Jakar. I'm going to go out on a limb. And uh, why, he, why he's got 22 seasons? Well, well, he said, well, oh, oh, you saying we don't know this year? No, I mean, I say this much. Robinson looks to be. In a hell of a lot better shape than he was last year, and he looks like he's going to have a a, a great season. Mm -hmm. But come on, but but Trevor Etienne, it's he's got natural ability that it don't matter how great of shape uh, Robinson and how great a year that was last year. There's some things that Trevor that um Trev, I mean that Etienne going to be able to do that that Robinson can't do. Can't do, yeah. You know, it's just that quickness, that speed, that certainness, the guy versatility and all that. And it's just, I mean, this guy really is a natural runner. <laughs> right. I mean, it's like when he can get through the hole, he can go 5, 10, 15 a lot quicker 
he can kick it in the gear than than James Robinson can. But it's a hey, I, I think that's gonna be like one of the best position competitions of training camp between those two guys. It'd be friendly competition, but I think it's gonna be great competition, man, between those two. Yeah. And, and yeah. James and James Robinson, I say this about him. You know, he understands what the scenario is. I mean, he understands what this situation is. He he understands that he's got to literally fight to keep that starting job. And he, to, to me, he looked like, man, he, he might have been one of the guys who went to the all-season program. And you looked on how he looked last year and, and his conditioning right now in the all-season mm-hmm. program. He might have been one of the, the guys that that – were in the best condition from any of the returning players from last season. So he oh, understands man, man. he understands he understands the, the scorecard. And I always say this, man, competition gonna bring out the this gonna bring the best for for the Jaguars and the fans, you know, to have two great running backs that's gonna be duking it out and dueling it out on the practice field, that can only help the Jaguars. And it's a it's it's a lot more good position battles that's going to be going on in training camp, man. Which is good. Yeah. I mean, you, you want competition. And they haven't had enough competition over the over the over the last three seasons to um to make an impact for the football team in general. But man, they're gonna be battling <laughs> without no question. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they are. Um I think um, Shaquille Griffin is a bona fide starter. He's a starter. Um, Miles Jack is a starter. Josh mm-hmm. Allen is a starter. Mm-hmm. Um, outside of that, uh, is there anybody else who you see who's like a legit yeah. starter on defense? I like, I don't... That middle linebacker, I don't think Joe Schobert is a lock that middle linebacker, not with Damian Wilson there. This guy yeah, I've play. been hearing that. Yeah, I played on Super Bowls. He's got the experience, and he actually got a little bit more athleticism than than, than Shobert. But Shobert had a, I mean, he had a good, he had a good all season, man, and he can cover. But there's some mm-hmm. demands at that middle linebacker spot, and in, in, in that three four is a little different than the four three. He's got to take on the block. You know, he don't have to. So it's not going to be a situation where you rely on the on the down lineman to you know to kind of. <laughs> get that block off of you. So he's got to make meet contact with contact on the line of scrimmage. And I don't know, man, Wilson looks like he's got a lot, a little better physical tools. So. <laughs> hey, Jakar brought up my guy. He yeah. said, what's the deal with Dylan Moses? What's going on with my man, Dylan Moses. And this guy, I tell you, he looks, he looks like a linebacker, you know, mm-hmm. he's coming off that injury, but toward the end of all season program, you know, he went from working on the um, on one of those um, side fields with the trainer to working with the linebacker. So it seems like his knee situation that he's making progress. But man, this guy looked like he's a <laughs> looks like linebacker. He looks like a legitimate linebacker to me. He looked like he looked like he should have been in, in drafted. To be honest. First and Nick round. Saban said that Nick Saban yeah. said that Nick Saban was upset that Dylan didn't get drafted. He said that even though Dylan has a documented injury history, he's been injured majority of his time in Alabama, but he played through most, most of those injuries. And he was saying that the fact that Dylan was able to play through injury, he should have at least got a fifth round grade just off of that alone. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, but it, like you said, the, the guy looks the part. And I think once he's fully healthy, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Dylan Moses, it was 2022, we're talking about him um, competing for the start for a starting job. I agree. And, I mean, just even this, man, the guy, I mean, I watched a couple of Alabama games last year. And everywhere, when a running back or anything, he was always near the ball. And yep. just to think, he played injured the whole season. Whole year. <laughs> whole season. The whole season, yeah, you know, and and like I say, man, co- competition is going to make the Jaguars this much better than what they were at any other time, man. It, it, to have that competition, that linebacker, I mean, you you looking at, <laughs> I mean, we can go down the line here. We looking at some guys that played played a lot last year that may not play a whole lot this year. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, it, it got a lot to do with the scheme too, but you know, there are some linebackers on there's linebackers on it, like Shaq Quarterman is an example. I think Shaq Quarterman is a good player, but he mm-hmm. may not see, he may not see the field for the second straight year. Yeah. <laughs> to him, um, dude, I forgot about Quincy. Qu- yeah. I, I saw Quincy Williams, I saw his name on the depth chart, and I said, dude, I forgot he was a Jaguar player, man. So it yeah. I don't know. I don't know if Quincy can make the team, man. I don't think he's on. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Now that they have brought all these guys in, man, I don't think so. And now with your outside linebacker position being yeah. filled with what was previously defensive ends and the old scheme, yeah, I that's, just I don't see any space for him. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm talking. About. I can't think of the kid right now from Wisconsin. I don't know if he can make it. To be honest, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, number forty eight. I can't remember his yeah. name. I know you're talking yeah. about playing yeah. that strong side linebacker. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He's right now in the in the all season program. He's running third team. <laughs> so, but that's yeah. like I say. That's that's a it's a good thing to have real good competition at a lot of positions. I'm I'm interested to see the competition at that at the opposite um cornerback spot from from Griffin with um C J Henderson and Tyson yep, Campbell. Yep. You know, the winner, the loser would be, would be the, um, you know, they play the other corner, the inside corner back spot. But still, I, I like that competition. You know, Tyson Campbell is a bigger version of C.J. Henderson. I don't know if he's – and he might be faster than C.J. Henderson. but He could be. You know. I think, I think he is. I think Tyson Campbell, I think he is faster than C.J. Henderson. So, he said he's bigger. Yeah, that's – that's 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 gonna be it's gonna be interesting then. Yeah, yeah that, that's gonna be interesting. Let's see, linebacker core is in good shape after releasing the Evans, Joe Giles Harris unit looks like Dakota Allen, Miles Leon Jacobs. That's who we're Leon, talking about. Leon. I don't know yeah. how you can get on the field, man. I was looking at so, that in that yeah, Dakota Allen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dakota Allen, Miles Jack, Leon Jacobs, Dylan Moses, Shaq Quarterman. Uh, Chappelle Russell, Joe Schobert, Quincy Williams, and Damian Wilson. Uh, right off top, um, yeah, I don't see Quincy Williams making his team, <laughs> or even Leon Leon Jacobs, man. Leon Jacobs may not make it either. So, because you look on the outside, Chase Sign is going to start a strong say the least start the season as a, as a, as a strong side linebacker, and then you got Josh Josh Allen on the opposite side. And then they can move. Yep, that's another cut. <laughs> Jakar. Jakar. Why you brought up Taven, Jakar? Oh, man. Don't let me. Y'all man. love bringing up Taven. <laughs> hey, how long the show going on so we can talk about this, man? <laughs> hey, <it's... laughs> hey, man, you can put me, what, Jakar, you can put Jakar, you can put me, you can put you. We can all go out and pay it. And we would be more instinctive on the football field than Taven Bryant. Oh my God. <laughs> we won't let the guy run right by us without making a reaction to the tackle. I mean, hey man. And then they got him playing that big end. I mean, come on, man. If he can't play, if he couldn't play inside, what makes you think he's gonna set the edge? <laughs> right. <laughs> Jacobs can play fullback. I didn't know he could play fullback. Well, he Leon might Jacobs. Be- he might need to play that because it might be hard for him to get on the field. <laughs> he say, "Hey, fellas, Melvin Ingram would have been a great addition." Hmm, yeah. that's, that's interesting. Yeah. It's a couple of veterans that's still out there that I was looking over, man. And, uh, and can they come in and contribute? Um, one of them. Have you heard anything about Zach Ertz? Because uh, I think Zach Ertz would be a great addition yeah. to the tight end room. Yeah, that still remains to be seen, man. Because they might. <sighs> I wouldn't be shocked if that trade. I mean, it, it's got to be the. He doesn't want to be in Philly, and all I'm hearing that they're asking for, you know, they're gonna have to give up a draft pick. I don't know if they're willing mm-hmm. to give up a fourth round pick for, them, but they need help in that room, man. I, hey, we can all talk about the great story of Tim Tebow and all that, but they need they need a front line tight end, you know? Yeah. And yeah, they do. And if you can get a, a Zach Ertz that would help their situation, 
and you don't have to you you may have to give up a third round or fourth round pick i i would pull the trigger on it man it can only can make you better because right now okay you said he played at, fullback at wisconsin well he might be need to practice that to get on the field <laughs> hey man i'm just i i, I hey he's yeah running, i mean he, truth is the truth he's running third team i don't know too many third team linebacker unless he going he'll play a lot of special teams but yeah you know they're gonna run you know hey they could have ward playing an outside linebacker they could have uh smooth been practicing a little bit at outside linebacker I so saw that. it's I'm telling you, it, it ain't gonna be like last year. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I don't know, man. It's just like those guys that make and get some trade value for um for a guy like Jacob since he's been in the league, you know, a couple of seasons. But uh, you know, they got a guy like Shaq Quarterman. He was a good linebacker for the University of Miami, but it just. I yeah, don't know yeah. if it, you know. I know he's from Orange Park, but I don't know if it's. It, it may not be a good fit for him, man. Everybody want to be in the league, get drafted, and want to play. Yeah, but yeah. he's not. He's not. He's he's not climbing that depth chart any any rap. You know, he's not moving up the depth chart any quicker than he did last season as a rookie. And I think him uh, the coaching change is what's really hurt him. Just mm-hmm. like a lot of players, coaching changes can can really hurt you. Shoot, um, uh, seeing to where guys fall completely off. Because they're not the guy that, that that coach wants, and so I mean, it doesn't mean the guy can't play. It's just coaching change. I need somebody who can run what I want to run. So um, let's see. Jakari says, "How are we stopping Tennessee this year? <laughs> hey, we can man. do it." Uh-huh. Hey, I'm gonna tell you like I told my coworker, man. Um, if he watch, I know he he be watching me from time to time. And so, uh, uh, Mr. David Turner, uh, the, the the our resident Tennessee fan. <laughs> um the way you I told him the way you beat him, you gotta you gotta get to Tannehill. Yeah, you got you got uh uh three beasts out there and Julio, AJ Brown, and Derrick Henry, but none of that's gonna matter if you can get Tannehill on the ground. Yeah, Tannehill making key throws at key times is what's gonna win them games. Julio's great, you know, AJ Brown is a beast, Derrick Henry, you know what he is. But yeah. if Tannehill cannot make the throws that he needs to make, like he didn't against Baltimore, even yeah. though Baltimore played one of the best defensive games I've seen, uh, probably since Jaguars' um, defensive uh, some of their games in 2017, um, and maybe uh, some of the Seattle Seahawks games, or the Rams played some great defensive games this year as well. But outside of that, man, you got to get him on the ground. You you got to get him on the ground. Get him on the ground. At least make them uncomfortable, but um, I, 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 you know, Tennessee gonna be tough, man. <laughs> I mean, we, we gotta gonna be face, tough. We gotta face the facts. They man, they favored in that division, and you, they got Julio, <laughs> they got the mm-hmm. Julie Bulldozer, and they, they got a good offensive line, and um, you know, it's gonna this this defense gonna be tested, obviously, in both those games. But like you say, I agree with you. Gotta get you gotta get a good pass rush. You. Definitely got to stop the run. I, mm-hmm. I like I, I like they back in. I, I, I think actually I think um, if they could get whatever the situation more consistent on the other side at that corner spot, uh, the corner spot with um, with either Henderson or, or, or Tyson Campbell, then that that would be excellent. You know, yeah. but I think they I don't think there's a problem at safety spot. You know, I think that. Um, yeah. You got to get pressure on the quarterback, and you got to make tackles. You know, you got, you got to stop Henry. <laughs> yeah, you got to, you got to stop Henry. I mean, at yeah. least you, you know, I, getting 70, 80 yards is not not bad, but you can't, you can't give him 40, 70, 60 yard runs and all that kind of foolishness. No. You know? See, if this defense can stop the run and rush the pastor just a little bit, we will be all right. Chase on is going to be a beast this season. Yeah, Chase, I think Chase on uh, takes another leap because I tell you right now the Rams are winning the Jalen Ramsey trade right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they are. you got that yeah. right. Yeah, they. It, I mean, it's no contest right now, but Chase on being better can go a long way. Yeah, and you know he's if as it 
the way it looks that he's going to be playing at his net, you know, it's, it's, he's more as a stand up guy. That's a natural spot for him. And, you know, last year with Walsh defense, I just thought it was too much of, you know, they were thinking more than reacting, you know, and I think with this defense, he's going to play a lot of guys and they're going to, they're going to be a physical attacking defense and they're going to blitz a lot. They're going to, they're going to do a lot of blitzing and mm-hmm. they're going to create pressure instead of sit. I thought, you know, with Walsh defense, I just thought they, they sat back too much. They didn't, they didn't force the issue enough. They just was like, they just, okay, we got to have a stop. And everybody in the, in the stadium knew they have to get a stop and they couldn't get the stop. And right. you got, you got to have a scheme that fits your talent. And he was too stubborn to, 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 to change. You know, you, you yeah. gotta, you, you gotta have a scheme that fits your talent. If Josh Allen can make 10 tackles, Based on his athleticism, that he can get on the edge and he can do all that. He can drop back in coverage. He can do all that. And you got Chase on who can do the same thing. That's where you put your best guys at. You put your best guys where they make the most plays. You know, not yeah, yeah. Not, you're not being stuck on you know all three, four defense. That's the only one I ever ran, and all that foolishness, man. You got to design a scheme. And even with this, even with this group, there there may be some games where they have to play three four. You know, and a three four might be better than a four three. You know, yeah. yeah. And, it, it, and you and you gotta you gotta be multiple front. So there might be some games where they play the four three, but don't be stubborn about it. If 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 your two outside linebackers like Josh Allen are athletic, and you know they can cover tight ends and and whatnot. Then put them in their best positions, and I think that's what um, I think that's what they're going to do with Cullen. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, one of the, one issues, of the issues, 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 issues. Look at what Nesco say. He said, "Wow, John, you and Brandon should be coaching." <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Put me on the staff. Put me yeah. on the staff. Hey, I, I'm I'm gear ready. So go ahead, put me on the staff for sure. Well, when but, you um, watch- <laughs> oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Oh man, this your this you say your internet was messing up. This is the first time it well, messed you, up. You, you trying to you oh, you trying to make you you trying to make things fix fit fit because mm-hmm. you drafted you made draft mistakes and then yep. you go week and week and you see the same mistakes repeated. You know you hey yeah. it's it's a new day well, man. That's, Ain't, that's Wash's problem. Wash's problem is his scheme stayed the same as the talent on the defense. Decrease. Mm-hmm. You you right. you have to change, man. You, you didn't have. You can't rush for and have good coverage on the back end. Well, you don't have any DBs that can cover. Like yeah, yeah. that doesn't make any sense to me. And so I, well, I, that's why I said when they fired Nate Hackett, they fired the wrong coordinator. They should have fired mm-hmm. Todd Wash, not Nate Hackett. And another thing, you go back to two seventeen when they lost that game to the Patriots. They should have had those guys playing man to man coverage. If if you got if if you got AJ Boy and you got Jalen Ramsey and you don't think those two guys can play man to man on the on the outside, then yeah. they might need glasses thicker than the ones I got. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> because yeah. that's you know, sometimes you can overcoach. And football is a is a simple game, man. It's it's simple. It's not, you know, sometimes you can just, you know, oh, this is my scheme and this and that. If those you got two guys that can literally isolate and play one on one against any top receiver. And we had them in zone. Then, then let, yeah, you had them in zone and, 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 and we lost the game because of that. <laughs> you can't make mistakes like that against Tom Brady, man. I know that's been years ago, but Still. Y'all love y'all love my pain, don't y'all? Y'all love bringing that stuff up, man. Y'all love seeing me in pain. That's <laughs> y'all love seeing me in pain, man. Oh. That's why I got these tissues, man. Because y'all just y'all <laughs> had me in so much. Y'all had me in so much pain, man. Y'all do. Oh hey. my god, y'all bring up Jakari started it with Taven. Now we talking about 2017. Lord have mercy. <laughs> <sighs> Brighter yeah. days are ahead, people. Well, Brighter man. days are ahead. Yeah, misery be over. Because, yeah, uh, 
eighty thousand a year to sweep the floor in the NBA. I, I, I take it. <laughs> I take it. I, I didn't know that. I, I need that job. Shoot, give me that little and shoot, and they ain't like they they sweeping with brooms. They got them little uh absorbing pads where they come get the sweat up. Let me do that. I, I do that all day long, man. Oh, oh, our last topic before we get out of here. Um, the NFL Combine. So the NFL Combine, they're going to a system where cities can bid um on hosting the NFL Combine, and we were talking about it before. And I, I'm gonna let you say it. I'm not gonna say it, but I think this is a good idea. Well, uh, <laughs> we we talked I'm, about it. I, I'm gonna say this. I mean, how much more money do the NFL need, man? I mean, yeah. we, we, this is this is a money grab. This ain't this ain't it's about money grab. This this ain't about. Oh, okay. Let's see what you can do. Let's put this this great event in another city. This is about how much the NFL could get from you know they could open this up see what's going to be offered and then select the highest bidder that's exactly what it is also the nfl do you think it ain't because of money why they went to single digit numbers on on, on the skill position play because you can sell more jerseys yes i, I don't want to be skipped but i'm just saying man yeah i mean i gotta call it as it is the nfl knows how to make money they're also talking about make going back to throwback helmets okay Go to, your, go to your sports shop and see if that be out. Oh, that's another thing you can get as a Christmas gift. I mean, yeah. it's money, 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 money. And this this whole idea of um, it'll be just like the, the draft. They, you know, it, there'd be shoppers market and shopping it to, to a market. But it would be good to have something like that in Jacksonville. But, you know, I'm just yeah, saying. I yeah, the money that the, uh, the events like that generate. So, like you said, those are three things that they've come up with this off season that's going to generate them more money. Throwback helmets in twenty twenty two, changing the numbers so guys can get single digits, and then moving the combine around. It's it's all money grab. It's all the money grab, man. And I understand it. And this this is help. It's going to help them grow the game as well because you know putting the city to city, um, state to state. Um, shoot, you can even host it over in Hawaii one year if you want to. I mean, I mean, so there's so many possibilities, you know, and them expanding and going outside of what was normally tradition. Because one thing about it is, uh, yeah, this tradition, but hey, hey, we got ideas where you see where we got a spike in sales, which I'm pretty sure they seen certain things and they tested certain things out. They say, hey, these things are making us money. We're going to change, tweak the, they tweak the rules for offense and yeah. uh, and for defense. They got it to where you can't touch the receivers at the five yards. That's that's a money thing. That's yeah. a money thing. They didn't do that to improve the game. They did that to get more money because off it's offense sell tickets. It's all about money. Yeah, and you know I got to give them to <laughs> whatever they're doing on New in 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 Manhattan and New York. They got some people in there who make good business decisions because this this is a billion billion <laughs> billion dollar industry, man. Yeah. And they know how to market their game. You know, sometimes I used to think the NBA was smart I said it about in my head too, Jakar. <laughs> oh, he talking about that that touchdown to uh, Amendola, that back left side touchdown to Amazon, Amendola in 2017. Tell me, he see it in his head every day. I do too. Yeah, I saw Barry Church who who lost coverage <laughs> in the back end of the end zone. The two safeties couldn't cover him because they were oh. playing zone. Uh, my personal favorite, um, not using Corey Grant in the second half at all, and yeah. then running on first down for the entire second half. I think. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, <laughs> hey, but Miles Jack wasn't down. Miles Jack was not down. <laughs> Miles Jack was not down. <laughs> oh my goodness! But yeah, this this NFL this NFL combine. I think um, teams hey, and like I say teams bidding on it. That's why you, Jacksonville has to get out of their own way. If you want things like this, because we talked about it, the goal is to get another Super Bowl. The goal is to get another Super Bowl here. So if you want these things, you you have to. You got a hey, whether it's Lot J or whether it's the uh, proposal for the new facilities, the uh, the, the five star hotel. I mean, you have to spend this money. I agree with you on that, man. It's it's time. <laughs> you know, I love my hometown. I love Jacksonville. 
born and raised. Used to even go to the Bulls games as a kid. He even went to a T-Man game as a kid. But, mm-hmm. and, hey, you know, if we're going to be a big league city, we we got to start acting like a big league city. And, you know, we got too many politicians who, you know, I don't know, just want to keep things as, as they are. Yeah. And, and it's only 32 cities in this country that's got an NBA and we got an NFL team. And if you go to all 31 other cities, they got things around their stadium. You know, they, they have entertainment districts around the stadium. You go to New England, they got hotels, they got a mall and a, mm-hmm. ho- and a hospital. Mm-hmm. You go to any, 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 any place. Even Cleveland, you know, people talk about Cleveland this and that, but but Cleveland got an entertainment district downtown that's not far from their football stadium. Yeah. And that's, you know, I know people don't understand, you know, I, I think some people have a concept that he's just out for, you know, filling his own pocket shot, shot con and all this, but hey, we, yeah. we, we got to move to the, <laughs> we got to move to, to, 2022 and beyond and not 1982 you know yeah, that yeah. that you you have to have these things to um to be successful you know you gotta have a five-star hotel a nice practice facility um yeah, yeah. amenities you know around the stadium so you know you you're not like on an island, just a stadium, and there's nothing else but parking lots. You, you know, other town, you know, the cities around these stadiums. You go to LA with that billion dollar stadium. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't think yeah. you got things around the stadium? <laughs> Shoot, I think it, I, I forgot. I think it's Cleveland or it's New. I don't know if it's New Orleans, but they talk about um, having a bar crawl not too far from the stadium to mm-hmm. where you have to where you got bars lined up. Where they can, yeah. you know, people can just go to bar, to bar, to bar, to bar, and we, we, they, they have, they're starting something similar to that. Like downtown, you got right where it's like Calford Chop House. They mm-hmm. got, a, um, you got the 1984, um, the little club there. You got Island mm-hmm. Girl. You got Calford. You got a restaurant, and then you got a couple of nightclubs and stuff. So little by little, they starting it, but it's not enough, man. It's yeah. not enough. And yeah. what you know, and I'll say this, I mean. I think it would be nice for for Bay Street to be an entertainment district from from yeah. Bay from Bay Street all the way to the stadium. You know, I mean, I don't know. You could start from Main Street and take Bay Street all the way to, to toward the stadium. And I don't want to move Maxwell House or anything like that. But just, yeah, just put entertainment stuff there, man. Just make it an entertainment with clubs and bars and wing places and restaurants and and make it an entertainment district you know on game days shut off traffic and make it a walking street and yeah and make yeah. it and make it fun you know make it make it um make it like a little bourbon street but but much cleaner or something so yeah. in order for jacksonville to move in the future that's the direction we have to go man whether whether we like it or not that's in order to get the big event you have to have yep, entertainment. Yep. You have to have entertainment districts, you know. Yep. And remember, remember, we talked about this. You're trying to beat the in-home experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is trying but, to beat. But, you know, another thing, hey, maybe you, the cost of a ticket is too expensive and you just want to be around the atmosphere. You know, a lot of people go to the Super Bowls. They don't go to the Super Bowl with a Super Bowl ticket. They go to the Super Bowl for the, be around, for the experience and be around the atmosphere so mm-hmm. if hey say say you're off on a sunday and you may not want to go see the jaguar game in person but you want to be around the stadium or hanging out or georgia or florida and you want to yep. be in, in in that among the crowd without having to be in the stadium and still have a great time so that's what you need you need you need entertainment you know hey, man, i mean i mean i was a kid Jacksonville had the probably the most strictest blue laws in the country, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you can't go back to the past. You got to move that clock forward. And, 
you know, you in order for Jacksonville to change its national profile, then we have to do things to to move forward and don't let politics get in the way of that. You know, we can't we can't sit still in this town for the next 50 years and, yeah. and, 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 and keep this football team in Jacksonville and just everything going to be peachy dory and everything, you know, because that's not progress. You know, you got to make no. progress. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So if you want to be what well, a big time city, you got to, you got to spend the money, man. You got to do the things you need to do in order to attract, um, to even the tourist dollar. You got to find a way yeah. to get the tourist dollar. So, I mean, and it's got all the things. I mean, that river that goes. You got enough space. You got of plenty time. of space. Yeah, and that river is could be. You can do a lot of things with that riverfront property, man. Uh, put an aquarium. Do. I mean that 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 St. John River could could be an attraction to attract a lot of things, entertainment, amuse. You know, I don't say amusement park, but but just entertainment destinations along that riverfront. Because there's a lot of a lot of great cities in this country that got NFL teams, they got a lot of river development. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Let's see, where are they going to build the new training facility? Oh, it's going to be right there, um, near the stadium. Yeah, you know, it'll be, but it'll be much nicer. I mean, it's like they're going to have another indoor football facility there two practice fields and a bit just a a lot you know you know you know one thing brandon that they said you know they had that um you know the press conference about you know putting up the, the all the the hotel and the and all mm -hmm. that but the one big thing that i took away from there they said that the training area right now for the jaguars inside inside the stadium where they got the weight room and the locker rooms and all that they said that the, the square footage for the football only area is only like fifty six thousand square feet mm -hmm. which is at the bottom Miami, yeah i remember you talked about that yeah the dolphins about to open up their new training facility and it's 156 square feet <laughs> so they tripled up on us wow yeah and, and the league averages i think i think the league average is 136 thousand square feet so we're behind we're behind we're behind the stadium we're behind the facility we're at the bottom um, yeah we're behind in experience so i mean you serious about the jaguars you want to keep it here and then this is the thing it's just not about uh just the jaguars it's not just about shot con and money this is about the growth of the city period i mean yeah. you want to make jacksonville a attraction to the country you yeah. know jaguars is a part of that and it can help you bring something that it, that you couldn't bring without the jaguars but you want to be able to uh drum up interest outside of the jaguars in the city and got people come to the city yeah and, and you want to you you could use the jaguars as a destination for you for this city you know and yeah. and, 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 and you know you, tourism brings jobs <laughs> you know it's when you have yeah, tourism it, it brings jobs to the area it, it's um you know you get more people flying in here than like the residents here like me and you if we want to leave out we don't have to we we have cheaper flights to fly out instead of they're so expensive now, you know. So mm -hmm. everything, I guess, a long story short, everything tie into each other, you know. Yeah. You know, we don't want Jacksonville to be back in the seventies when we're in two thousand and twenty-two. So we have to make progress, and you do, yeah. and you and you take advantage of what you got. You got a beautiful river. You got a football NFL football team where only thirty-two cities in the country can say it. And you got a lot of land here. You got a lot of land. You got a, you got land around that stadium. And if you got an owner willing to invest and he he has a vision, you know, it, it might be time to jump on board. It's not lot J, you know. Yeah, yeah. And you are, you have a um you have a uh, a top notch arena that has mm -hmm. attracted um plenty of basketball events. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, from the NCAA tournament to preseason. Uh, basketball games, 
to uh, now. I think um, what the Puerto Rico came here and played the U.S. in an um, exhibition game one year. So you got a facility that can bring in um, uh, basketball events. So yeah, you 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 just have you have to build this up. Let's see, Jakar say here in Texas they say Jacksonville is bad. Well, I mean that that that's the story. That's that's the national story. The national anyway. perception, you know. That's the next, national perception. Yeah. And another yeah. thing is, you never want to be complacent. You know, it, they you know Jacksonville should have a twenty year plan. Twenty year plan. You want to build your city around sports, then maybe. 20 10 years but now we ought to try to say well let's let's try to get another professional team here you know yeah let you know let's don't just stick with with football just let's have a vision and it mm -hmm. takes in order to have a vision you have to have a plan and then yeah. you you work to get to your plan if it's a 10 years away then you work toward getting what you need maybe hey hey Get another and, NBA team or uh, get a hockey, you know, get me, but, but have a vision so we're not sitting right. still for the next 30 years, you know? And so, um, and this is, I don't know, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure um, officials um, for the city, whether politician, whatever, and those who are in charge of getting these things done see it just like Brandon Lampley on the south side mm -hmm. of Jacksonville sees it. Because of the pandemic, and just from natural um, people naturally um, retiring and coming to the South. And, you know, the, we get uh, we get a lot of people here in Florida. People have been coming and lo relocating to Florida um, at a high rate for the last year or so. You know, mm -hmm. people are leaving places like California. They're leaving um, a lot of these liberal states who have so many restrictions and they want to come to places like Florida, places like Jacksonville. You got um, event holders who since we don't have restrictions here, they're going to come here and hold events here. That UFC that sold out where they had Mike Tyson here and, mm -hmm. you know, Gardner Minshew in the crowd and all those, and they were sold out. It was because, you know, we don't have restrictions here and they're going to have more things in Florida. So you're looking at over the next couple of years, an influx of tourists and mm -hmm. uh, residents coming mm -hmm. to this state mm -hmm. and Jacksonville coming to the city as well. So knowing that you want to capitalize on that because that's money, money that's mm -hmm. money coming here. So you want to capitalize on those things. You know, something else, Brandon, like I, I spent a lot like what he said about Texas. I spent a lot of time in Texas. I, I see a city like Dallas, you know, Dallas doesn't have a whole lot of attractions. They don't have water and all that. But mm -hmm. one thing about Dallas, Dallas, puts money into things that brings people to their city like the, like the stadium like like the Dallas Cowboys stadium like where the Mavericks play a beautiful arena they got mm -hmm. six six flags over Texas they got a baseball that the, 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 the old baseball stadium was built in 93 then they done built a new one that's domed you know yeah. and it's just like you have to bring things to attract people to come to your city. And that's what Dallas did. You know, D Dallas is a beautiful town. It's a flat town and it, you know, it's no water, but it's, a, but they, they made it an attraction. It just, it, it, it wasn't like New York city where everything is there. You know, mm -hmm. they built, they built it to, to be what it is right now. And that's the same thing that happened here. You know, you have to, make it an attraction it is not going to be an attraction by itself you know you have yeah. to make it an attraction and that's what dallas did you know yeah and i'm sure jerry jones had a nice hand in that you know um, <laughs> yeah. i'm sure he got pushback i'm sure he got pushback like shot Khan is still getting pushback because they people saying well the jaguars are a success but shot Khan himself that man is a success I mean, his, the, the worst uh part of his uh, as far as him and his business acumen is probably the jaguars and, yeah. you know, but it, like you said, brighter days are ahead, but allow Shah Khan to, um, you know, to bring the vision there, man, because he wants to build the city up. You say Khan has Jerry potential, though. Yeah, that's that's what I was getting to. I think he does. I think he does, especially he lets football people come in and be football people. And I understand. I understand him holding on to people. I get that, because if you're just so quick to fire people. Mm -hmm. Guys see that they don't have job security. And so you're going to um, get less and less people interested because like, well, 
uh, things could go wrong and something could happen out of my control and you done got me going in a year and a half or so or a year or two. I get that. But when you clearly see that it's going left, get them out of here. Go, go ahead. Go ahead and get them out of here. But you know what? Also, it's always good to have a multi-billionaire in your town that own your team. <laughs> yeah. Because every NFL owner is not a multi-billionaire like Khan is. And that's right. a benefit, you know. And yeah. you have to take advantage of those that type of benefit. He's got, I mean, he's got money. You know, he's not, you know, there's been some owners in the NFL who live and die by their football team, you know, that the football team is their sole income, you know. Mm -hmm. He's not like that. You know, that just the, the Jaguars is almost literally like a write off for him. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, well, man, man, we did it. This was, this is, I think, our longest show, man. That, <laughs> hey, that, that um, we, we gave a, a nice little um, uh, business lesson as far as building up the city. Uh, so, hey, uh, Brandon Lampley and John Reed, uh, city building consultants. <laughs> uh, we will be. Opening a firm soon. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, we we, hey. be, we can be consultants. <laughs> hey, hey, and we didn't already talked about that. We, I got some uh, some design ideas for a new stadium. I think they might like it. <laughs> oh, you better be quiet on that. Yeah, I'm, hey, I'm gonna be quiet on that. I'm not gonna put it out here. But I got hey. some design ideas for that stadium. Hey, the Jaguars might be listening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, they 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 talk about they announcing a new stadium, and I see the design, and it's my design. You tell me, I'm down there Monday morning, like, hey, hey, I, I, I need my money. I need yeah. my money. Hey, Jakar say, uh, y'all need investors. Yes, we we need all the investors that we can get, man. We need yeah. all the investors that we can get. Yes, you sir. Got that yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> man, I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Hey, follow Mr. Reed on Twitter, uh, jacksonville.com for the Florida Times Union. Uh, you say you got an article about Tebow coming out tomorrow. Um, so you guys check that out. I'll check that out. And practice then, squad. Um, practice squad. <laughs> practice squad for Tebow, man. And I think that'll be I think that'll be good for Tebow. The fact that he can make a practice squad is going to say a lot. Now, it's going to say a lot about him as an athlete. And it's going to say a lot as well about the uh, state of our tight ends. <laughs> so, I mean, it is what it is. But like you say, um, it, it's going to say a lot about him as well. So um, I'll be looking forward to that. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Um, so, hey, that's it, man. I, um, oh, I had a show I was going to do before your show, uh, for the show today. Uh, with uh, Coach Samuel Williams, former coach of uh, EWC. EWC just came and cleaned everybody out, so he ain't at EWC no more, but me and him going to do a show uh, tomorrow. Uh, he's, I think he's going down to Tampa to um, uh, be a coach at a JUCO. So, but um, um, I'll be interested to see um, what the fallout was at EWC. I'm seeing how much information he can give me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. yeah. Because after after Dion came with just with Jackson State and, and put a fifty burger on them and blanked them, uh, they said it wasn't the same after that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But man, I appreciate y'all. Man, like, share, and subscribe. But we are out of here, man. Peace out, y'all. Peace out. <laughs>